Hi, I'm Linda Fox. I'm senior reporter with Focuswire. I'm in the Focuswire studio at the Focus Right Conference. I'm delighted to be joined by Bob Diener and currently your travel funders network. Yes, that's right. But your history in the industry goes back a lot further than that. So I've been, I've been doing this quite a few years, right. but I love it. It's great. It's in the blood. So take us back to Hotel Reservations Network, which became Hotels.com. Yes. Just briefly take us through that journey. You Back in 19... Sure. So it was actually 1991. There you go. I started Hotel Reservations Network along with uh, David Lipman, mm -hmm. who's still my business partner. And I did was there was no internet then. So it was a call center business. And the concept was to offer consumers, number one, better deals on hotels, and, and number two, find availability. So the, the big issue at the time was that when it was a busy date, it took consumers so long to find a good deal in a hotel. Sure. You know, travel agencies didn't want to book it because it wasn't a lot of commission. And you literally have to call hotel by hotel by hotel uh, uh, to try to find, uh, to shop the rates and try to find a hotel that was appropriate for you. And that had availability, yep. especially when it was busy. So we simplified that process and we gave consumers a central number to call to find hotels in the areas they want, in the price range that they wanted, in the categories that they wanted at good values. Yeah. And then you sell a bit of the company to what becomes Hotels.com. We sell it to Interactive, I think it was at the time. And then you sell the remaining part of the company and you remained with it in that period of time. Is that right? Well, that's right. So... In, in 1995, someone knocked on my door. His name was Dave Ray, and he was a real visionary. And he said, I want to show you a new technology. I said, what's that? He said, it's the internet. <laughs> he says, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I said, let's take a look at it. Okay. So he showed me the technology. It was very slow because mm -hmm. it was basically a dial-up at the time. Yeah. And we would sit there and we would watch letter by letter come in. And he says, I want to do this for hotels. I said, Dave, that's great, but it's really too slow. You know, consumers aren't going to sit there and wait. And he says, I'll make you a deal. He says, I'll build a site for you yeah, and just pay me 10% commission. Okay. And so that's how it started. That was actually hoteldiscount.com. Okay. And that was the first site at Hotel Reservations Network. And we eventually bought that site out. Yeah. And in 1997, the internet became interactive. And that was the industrial revolution for us. Because yeah. then someone could come on to the, you know, to the internet from anywhere in the world and book an instant reservation. Mm -hmm. And we actually sold the company uh, in 1999, but we kept a significant portion we ended up taking it public in 2000. Now, we were still HRN, yep. Hotel Reservations Network. And then we had a big meeting a couple of years later with our executives. And we decided, you know what? It's time to market with a much better brand name and really directly to the consumer because yep. we were mostly doing an affiliate type of program. And we came up with a name, uh, Hotels.com. Of course, it also included Hotel.com. And we actually worked with them. They were an affiliate for us. Mm -hmm. And these were people working out of their garage in the Midwest. And we ended up buying the domains, and it turned into Hotels.com. And, Very of course, good. we sold it, and uh, uh, IAC came to us in 2003. They wanted to buy the remaining interest, and we ended up selling the remaining interest. But from the initial sale, we stayed on with the company for several years, built it up. Uh -huh. And then, of course, we had our non-compete. Of course. And, that, and we had a five-year non-compete. So and then you do get a room. And then we did get a room. We got tired of sitting around on the beach in our flip-flops, and we started to get a room. And which you clearly was, saw still massive opportunity in the hotel distribution space. You know, it's amazing. There's always opportunity. Yeah. So it's a matter of finding what are the gaps, what do consumers want. But the same business philosophy. We're what you call conservative entrepreneurs. So we're very careful about how we do things. We're very methodical. We really look for the value proposition. And we watch the bottom line. So, yeah. you know, we believe in growth, not just at the top. It's got to be top and bottom and to do it carefully and to test every phase of the way and just have a really good, solid value product. Okay. So now bring us up to date. You've got your president of Travel Funders Network. You've still got the same partner. What are you doing with Travel Funders Network? So right now we're strictly in the B2B space. Okay. We're a wholesaler for hotels and we've developed a phenomenal network of uh, closed user groups of uh, consumers that are booking, for example, air, they're booking car, and we put a hotel as part of that, that part of that booking mm -hmm. process. Are they like uh, so closed user groups? So they're they're already part of a club or that kind of thing. Is that what? We're well, they either about? have credentials from the organization, or let's say, for example, they're booking airfare and it's packaged with a hotel. Okay. Or they're booking airfare and as part of that booking, we ask them, "Do you need a hotel?" Mm -hmm. Because we know there's a pretty uh, significant crossover between air and hotel, and also from car. People don't think about cars, but also yeah. car to hotel. Yeah, if you can get people and, to attach, there's big. And, and that's a market there. that most people aren't touching. Yeah. And I spoke to so many people uh, 
here at Focus Right that are doing air and their percentage of hotel business is so small. Yeah. I, I said, well, why aren't you taking bigger advantage yeah. of it? Yeah. So, because that's where margins are, right? right exactly. Yeah. So we, we all, you know, at TFN, we really looked for gaps in the marketplace. Uh, what really isn't being touched? Because we don't want to compete with others in the marketplace. So there's great travel companies that are out there. We wanted sure. to do something different. And so we developed a unique network uh, at TFN uh, to bring a real value proposition to our hotel partners that, hey, here's a, here's a new uh, channel that you can participate in that's different, that's creative, that's innovative, and that can bring you new business in this CUG world without any issues of uh, it's not public, so nobody knows what the rate is because the rate's hidden. And so it, it's a great opportunity for hotels to be able to move additional product yep. and be creative uh, without jeopardizing their traditional markets. Okay, let's talk about some of the bigger issues that are currently out there. Um, the shift in thinking, for example, of hotels is not just rooms, but utilizing their wider space. What's your perspective on that? And what do you see as the kind of tech challenges around that? Well, there's lots of tech challenges, but I, you know, I will say that hotels are getting better and better. So, uh, and they will continue to get better and better. Yeah. And, you know, the hotel stay is not just uh, a room. Exactly. It's the entire experience. Yeah. And so that's what we're starting to see. We're starting to see experiences being brought into the whole process. So yeah. it can be in the initial booking. It can be later. But, you know, consumers want uh, an easy experience. If they're going to, say, a resort, a leisure type of destination, you know, they want activities. So how are the activities presented? Exactly. That's all opportunity. They want, uh, a lot of companies want meeting space. People want food and beverage. So hotel is much more than the room. Mm -hmm. And the revenue potential for hoteliers, depending on the type of property and destination, is much more than the room. They can really monetize a lot. Yeah. And so the opportunity for different areas of monetization for hoteliers is going to get better and better with time. Because it's just, it's great space. People often need a, uh, you know, just a place to be able to have a meeting, uh, have an event, you know, do different types of activities, and hotels are the perfect place for that. Yeah. And do you feel that the tech needs to, to, to catch up to enable the hotels to, to sell the wellness, the, the, the meetings, the, you know, whatever, the experiences, whatever it happens to be? Yes. And, and, and we're seeing a lot of companies getting into that space. Yeah. And, you know, Great. some of them are here and some of them are not here. Yeah. But that's an area that's going to greatly grow. Yeah. Uh, because if you, can, if you can give them that experience... And if you can book it simply and easily and it's streamlined, uh, for example, you know, we've seen uh, companies offering baby products. We had the crib yeah, in the room. Crib, yeah, Right. Yeah. So that's just one example. Yeah. Um, but I've seen a lot of others. I've seen companies bringing in uh, exercise equipment to the room. So if you'd like to do the treadmill, a treadmill's in your room. That's great. You get up, yep. you do your treadmill, and everybody has time to go to the gym or, or then maybe they don't like going to the gym. Maybe they want to uh, watch or do a phone call while they're on the treadmill. So that's just one example, but, you know, customizing your type of bedding, you know, what sure. type of pillow do you like? Sure. What type of uh, uh, mattress do you like? So there's so many opportunities and all the experiences that go along with it, because when people are traveling, they spend money, mm -hmm. right? How do you think the, the, the hotel mm -hmm. distribution technology is changing? You know, it changed in recent years and is still changing. What do you think are the main sort of fundamental changes that are happening? Well, I think it's efficiency, and, and I think it's catering, uh, catering your product to the audience. So if, you know, if you're a five-star traveler and you're seeing everything that would be appropriate for a one- or two-star traveler, well, you're not very happy with that experience. But if you know, I come to the site and you know who I am and you know what I like, you know what area of the city I like, you know yep. what types of um, uh, the areas I like to stay in, you know the types of experiences I enjoy, yep. and you present that to me, that's so simple and easy. Yeah. It's not just a matter of the price. You know, price is always a factor, but convenience yeah, sure. is really just as important. And if you can provide those experiences to me in a type of, um, in a type of atmosphere that's appropriate for my needs, the more you know about me. And, and you know, if I booked a couple of times on your site, you know a lot about me. Yeah. Okay. But the problem is people have not been taking advantage of that data. Yeah. And do you think so, AI will bring that on significantly? Yeah, there's no question because yeah. AI is going to look at several things. Number one, it's going to look at your past history. It's also going to look at similar travelers in your similar type of situation. So you can present something that I enjoy. Uh, you asked me about experiences. Well, that's a typical, if you know my profile and you know similar travelers' profiles, well, what do they enjoy doing? What type of dining experiences do they like? Um, you know, maybe I've got several family members at a hotel and I want to have a private chef come in. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
maybe I want to have a private tour guide take us to certain areas. Maybe I, I, you know, I want a fishing experience. I want a diving. I mean, it can be, I want golfing experience. It can be all kinds of things sure. that are great opportunities for monetization. And you can present a lot of that through AI tools yeah. uh, in a way that's going to uh, make someone spend more yeah. and have a much better experience mm -hmm. and be much more profitable for, for the, uh, the lodging partners. Offering them things that they never even knew they needed, right? Exactly. <laughs> so you don't always know what you need. But if others, you know, one of the most important things I've always found is that when people um, are looking at what to buy, where to stay, where to go, most important is what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. Everybody cares. That's why reviews are so important. Everybody wants to know what everybody else is doing. Yeah. So the better you can present that, the better you're going to monetize. Now you've successfully exited on a number of occasions and now you, you know, you've got another business and clearly there's a lot of opportunity there. Do you see real innovation in hotel technology and distribution right now or is it incremental type um, change and development? Well, it's getting better over time. I wouldn't say it's rapidly developed. I'd say yeah, it's, it's developing. Yeah, it's not like big boom sort of innovation. It's not like big it? booms, but you know, a big thing happened during COVID. And, and the big thing that happened is it was a big wake-up call yeah, yeah. to the way people travel. And, and uh, a lot of online companies developed really fast over COVID um, to adapt to a changing marketplace. And a changing marketplace is that it's accepted for people to work from anywhere. Yeah. So that means people are traveling more and they will travel more going forward because they can do whatever they need to do wherever they are. So, uh, you know, conferences over video are much more accepted. Yeah. Working out of offices is much, it's much more accepted. Yeah. Um, so, and the technology is adapted to that very quickly. And so, uh, and, and everything that goes along with that is going to get better and better with time. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, what have you learned along the way that you would kind of, the kind of advice that you would impart to others starting in this industry? Because obviously we've got a lot of startups here. Well, you know, I met a lot of uh, startups here. Yeah, uh, some of some, our hot 25, I hope. Yeah, of course. Some I knew, some I didn't know. Um, but what I'll say is that there's always room for opportunity. Yeah. And it, it's a matter of figuring out what's missing. What's a value proposition? And, and I'll give you an example. Uh, last weekend, I went to Asheville for, for my nephew's uh, wedding. And it was so busy there, I couldn't get a car. Okay. But I went on to Turo. Right. And I got a car through Turo. Okay. And it was a great experience. Uh, the owner brought the car to my hotel. It was, it was fantastic. It was a beautiful Rivlin. Rivlin. Uh, so I had a lot of fun with it. It was great. Um, and then I went on and I, and I downloaded some of the guides that took me through the parkway with a lot of explanations about the waterfalls and hikes. That's just a couple of examples of, of recent innovation. Yeah. But we're seeing more and more of that. And so, you know, my advice to kind of people starting, it was number one, make sure you're, uh, do your research. Yeah. I'm amazed a lot of people don't do enough research. Yep. Due diligence is critical. Yes. Find out who else is out there doing what you want to do mm -hmm. and how are you going to be different? Yeah, and better. What do you bring into, and better, what do you bring into the marketplace? Yep. So number one, having a real value proposition for the end user. Yep. And then number two is how are you going to monetize it? Yes. I'm amazed how many people come Crucial. to me. Sure, yeah. And they tell me they've got the greatest plan in the world and- uh, you know, I talk, I listen to it, we talk through it, and then I ask them one fundamental question. How are you going to make money? How are you going to make money? Yeah. And they turn red. Oh. And you know what they always tell me? They're going to buy ads on Google. Oh. And then I ask them, do you know how much it costs to buy ads on Google? Yeah. And then they turn purple. It's like, are you not reading the press? You know? <laughs> so there are myriads of ways to market, myriads of ways to get your uh, product out there. Mm -hmm. But it takes creativity. And it's not just, you know, Maybe, I, I mean, I love Google advertising. Maybe it'll work, but yeah. maybe it won't work for yeah. you. Yeah. But do you know what the uh, economics are of it? Yeah. And do you know how it ends up for most people? Exactly. Yeah. And, and do you think you have a competitive edge there where you can make that type of advertising profitable? Yeah. Or are you going to go about a different way of bringing in clients to your business? So it's doing the due diligence and it's really having the, the um, uh, being methodical mm -hmm. about your numbers, top and bottom. And, and, and making sure you have a real profit proposition. But from the beginning, you should have a model that's going to work longer term pr profitability wise. Yeah. Yes, there's a build up time, but what's your model at the end of the day? Yeah, yeah, very good. Um, just as we round up here, is there something that you know now that you had wished you'd known when you started out with all of this? Well, you know, I always make mistakes and people say, uh, uh, 
you know, I developed this business and it was a straight route and I made my mistakes. That, that almost never happens. Mm. So uh, it's always a circumcutous route to success. Yes. It's just the way it works. And, and there's going to be failures. Yes. And, and you're going to make mistakes. Yeah. And, 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 and I would say it's accepting those failures and learning from them and moving on quickly. Yeah, yeah. So because I see so many people just, they can't accept a failure right. and they, they just go emotional. in circles and they can, yeah, they get yeah. emotional and they yeah. can never move forward. Yeah. So it's accepting, uh, accepting your mistakes, but learning fast and right. adapting fast. Yeah. And the faster you adapt, the faster you get to where you want to be. Bob, thank you so much for joining us. Great It's been a pleasure being with you. Thank you.